It is Friday, 25 March, year of our Lord, 2022. This is RPT, Red Pill Tamales, Big Die. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? Hey, man. Uh, put, put on your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. We, um, we've hit a new level. For sure. Of greatness. You know, we, we got a lot of guests and shit, but I know a lot of people are going to be excited. Uh, mainly Rob. Boy, Rob couldn't sit still. He, he came in an hour early. <laughs> I did come in pretty early. Like, man, we got anomaly today. Big die. <laughs> big die. And, I, and I'm also saying that, which I'm not too proud of. You guys have me completely saying big die. Big die. Yeah. To big, everything. Yeah, big die. Oh, yeah. I'm going to know how many... Uh, Members of the Thea, we have on this legalized freedom tour because I'm going to just, what's up, big nah, to everybody. Yes. And then we're going to see if they fucking get it or not. That's a great way to know if they listen to the podcast. Yeah, if, the you, don't get, yeah, if you don't get it, it's because you don't listen. Yeah. Legalized freedom tour, we coming in hot. We headed to West Palm Beach, Florida, April 3rd, and then the Northwest, Tacoma, Washington, April 7th, Nashville, Tennessee, beautiful red state, uh, April 14th, Corpus Christi, Texas, May 5th through the 7th, Chingo de Mayo edition. Arlington, Texas. What up, DF Dub? May 12th through the 15th. New Braunfels, May 20th. Abilene, May 21st. Oh, wait. There's a fucking asterisk next to Abilene. Why? Long story. Okay. But uh, the venue wants to take 15% of our merch money. And it's like, you know what, dog? I could just chill at the house. So, yeah, let, let's don't worry about Abilene. Lubbock, Texas, May 22nd. Bryan College Station, May 28th. That's two shows. San Angelo, June 3rd. Odessa, June 4th. Austin, Texas, please don't be woke, June 9th, and uh, so many more dates, Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, Denver, Oklahoma City, Chi-Town, Phoenix, San Jose, yay, yay, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison, we're hitting about 30 cities, man, Legalized Freedom Tour, hit up chingobling.com, get your tickets now, big time. How you feeling today, man? <clears throat> so, I'm on a variety of medicines, uh, Rob and I, we, we must be allergic to the same shit, I don't know what's going on in the air right now, trees, pollen, I don't even know what I'm allergic to, but when that cold front came through, it just fucked a lot of us up, it fucked us up. Yeah, so, on um, Tuesday, people heard how you came in here and you're like, ah, take two, right, like you're trying to clear your throat, Yeah, I was terrible. fine, Wednesday morning I wake up and I'm like, oh great, I have whatever you had. And here we are today. It's allergies, motherfucker. You looking at me like I'm a leper. I'm not allergic to shit other than lies from the left. So what are you thinking? All of a sudden you got some new allergies or are you thinking it's not allergies? No, nah, it's probably just like a, what do they call it? A rhinovirus, which is like a common cold. Oh, rhinovirus. Oh, okay. I thought you were allergic to fake ass Republicans. Definitely allergic to the that The neocons as well. and shit, the warmongers. Those motherfuckers. Yeah, the ones that be kicking it over there with uh, Clinton and Obama taking selfies and shit. There's that recent video. I don't know if it's recent, but uh, Liz Cheney talking about, she's on a panel. She's like, I'm Republican. And they zoom in and she's like, well, not all Republican, you know? And everyone's like, there's like a background track where it's like, oh, obviously we fucking know that. Yeah. Anyway, Rhino at its best. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck we got, dog, but um, it's in the air. Uh, I was I done took everything yesterday. I took everything from Benadryl to Sudafed to some shit from Mexico. I don't even know what the fuck it is. Nasal spray. Uh, nasal spray, Sudafed, switched it up. And then God's green, beautiful plant is what did the, the best. Hitting God's beautiful plant, it just opened up everything. The, the, the stuffiness, the pain, the pressure, the lungs opened up. I even coughed up some green shit. You know what made me feel good? And it's probably as counterintuitive, but at the moment it felt good. A good, strong shot of whiskey. So basically what it is, is everybody just picks their vice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and attributes uh, good things to it. A hundred percent. As soon as I took the first sip, I was like... My eyes got open. I felt less pressure. I was like, oh, great. I should have done this from the beginning. Yeah, I, I could see. I could definitely see like a hot toddy. Hot toddy. Or anything. What, what is hot toddies made with? Uh, it's just like a whiskey, some kind of tea. Can whis so it's whiskey? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to see what I got. I think we got bourbon over there. Yeah, right? same, jazz, same, same jazz. Okay, so uh, uh, I thought Rob was going to say like, man, my sinus was fucked up. Man, I, did a, I snorted a big old line, about an eight-inch line of cocaine. Dude, I felt like I did when I took that nasal spray. I've never, I don't like nasals. I don't like anything. I don't like the COVID swap. I don't like anything in my nose, right? But I took that. So, did you do it? Get the, 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 the spray? Yeah, I got the spray. It doesn't bother you? It, it's annoying because it, it like makes your eyes water and then it's like dripping down your, your yeah, mustache. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it was intense. I felt like I'd done a long ass line of coke. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this show going? Uh, I hope there's no children listening. But yeah, man, I'm on so many medicines. I'm about to pop this cough drop. Uh, we're just trying to knock out this intro because we got anomaly. Uh, it was it was very enjoyable. Um, you know, it just so happens, bro. He was he's from originally from Jersey. Yeah, and you know me. Anytime I meet somebody from Jersey, I gotta be like, man, what exit off the turnpike, Big Don? Big Don. Where you at, Trenton, Camden? 
East Orange, West Orange, New Brunswick, uh, Perth Amboy. Where you at? You know about my school? You know what I'm talking about? You ever heard of my school, Big Don? The private prep school, bro. I went there for four years, Big Don. I did a four-year bid, Big Don. The what? dormitories were cold, homie. Hey, what'd you learn when you were there? <sighs> like what? What, do you mean? <laughs> what did you learn in your four years? In high school? No, man. Or, I mean, I guess, yeah, the prep school. Yeah, it was a high school, motherfucker. What I forgot. Mean? Yeah, I thought it was a college. I mean, I'm not a biologist. Don't ask me to define certain things. What is a woman, Shingo? Hey, I can't do that. You know what, Eva Longoria? I bet you're not willing to hop on Instagram, Twitter, anywhere. Somebody needs to ambush her, like on the street, TMZ style, and just be like, set her up. Hey, you know, congrats on all the projects you got. You know, thanks for repping Latinas and love what you're doing. And then just be like, can you define a woman? <sighs> First, you got to get her talking. And then pull a rug from up under her. And George Lopez, somebody needs to heckle him in his shows and be like, hey, bro, how many genders are there? Should we have tampons in the boys' restroom? What is a woman, George? Hey, before blood pressure goes up, let's, let's, stop. <laughs> let's not keep the people waiting. All right, y'all, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we have Dream Rare, a.k.a. Anomaly, right here on RPT. Tell a friend, share the clips, subscribe, dale like, and don't forget, patreon.com forward slash Red Piltamales. This is listener funded, and we appreciate you. Peace. What's up, Big Die? It's your boy Chingo Bling. We are back in the building. We got producer Rob in the background. Burr, burr, burr. It's motherfucking Red Pill Tamales, boy. Guess what I tweeted, man? I said, what other comedian rapper got a motherfucking political podcast and shit? Uh, Latino comedian. The only rapper. one, I think. You know what I'm talking about? And speaking of bars, we got Anomaly in the building. What's up, Big Die? Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. For sure, brother. Uh, AKA Dream Rare. AKA I'm too strong for the gulags. Uh, <laughs> yo, man. So, so first of all, shout out to your set. I love that painting with the beach and the, and the motherfucking palm trees and shit. Thank you. I appreciate that. Real quick, I got it in West Hollywood. I was at some sort of thrift, like uh, farmers market sort of thing. It was like a hundred bucks, and the dude, like, he was sketchy. But I was, I was thinking, I'm like, it felt like he was ripping me off. You know, sometimes your intuition is like, yo, this guy's trying to scam me. But I was like, a hundred dollars for that thing, man. That's great price, investment. That, that right there is prices because that right there, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, it, it just has a charm to it. It just brings me to like, man, be present, man. Think you at the beach. Mm. Think you're at the beach and shit. So, are you still based out of Cali, or have you uh, escaped? Yeah, I'm in I'm in SoCal. Oh, motherfucker, you need to be a refugee, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I going? Uh, I guess Florida has no income tax. I know Tennessee does. I've been eyeing those just, you know, life-wise, business-wise, better, better regulation. Yeah, I just came back from Florida, and I must say, the Floridians have life figured out. There is a gym called Southwest Florida, Naples, and that's where old, rich, white people go to die. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great place to die. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. It's you, beautiful. You don't want to. You don't want to be like locked down in New York your last couple years. But uh, yo, so you're still in SoCal. Uh, where are you from originally? I'm from New Jersey. Oh shit! What part? Uh, Central. I moved like ten times, but like Central New Jersey. Like, um, I feel like I moved every couple of years for the most part. So Heights I live, Town. Like, near near like Princeton University, I would say is like a noteworthy thing, like New Brunswick, uh, yeah. Rutgers. Like th there's besides that, there's not much out there. Have you heard of Petty, the Petty School? Uh, it's like a town. private school, or yeah, it's a prep school yeah. like near uh, Princeton. That's where I went for four years. Okay, so I know all about the Turnpike, big dog. <laughs> all right, I it's, a good, I should, it's a good school, right? That's it's a, a great school, man. Right, a real yeah. good indoctrination, right there, bro. <laughs> they they well, made me a little Maoist and Marxist, right there. <laughs> you came, you came out with the communist manifesto. You had the communist hat on. No, I'm just playing. Like Jen Psaki. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your rap days, brother. A lot of people don't know. Um, this motherfucker got bars like. I ain't going nowhere like Tim Pool's beanie. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> Holy shit. The first rap I heard of you was, uh, I'm too strong for the gulags. And I was like, what the fuck? They rapping about the gulags. I'm like, damn. That means I might have to, you know, sprinkle some of this vocabulary in my shit. See if Mexicans uh, uh, know what the hell I'm talking about. But uh, Rob was telling me, producer Rob was telling me and schooling me that, uh, you know, you initially went to L.A. and like you had potential deals on the table. And, and tell us about some of the shenanigans you saw like behind the scenes in the industry. Yeah. So I, I started rapping just freestyling out of my dorm room in West Virginia. I went to West Virginia University and I had some offers like people were like, you'll come to New York. Like they brought me. I don't know if it was Sony. I can't really remember, but like nice building, you know, what I'm saying nice room. And I think at the time they couldn't really figure me out, right? I was, uh, I'm actually part Puerto Rican, but uh, you know, I was 
not in the sun. So I was even extra white back then, just smoking weed in college, you know, partying and stuff. And I felt like they just never understood me. They're like dressed like this. You know, at one point, one of them said, like, don't rap about politics, just rap about like money and chicks and like, you know, weed or whatever. So so, so then they, I, so then they went and found Asher Roth. <laughs> yeah, I remember when that song came out, I was like, I always I never liked rappers like that. Now I'm way less of a hater. I'm like, all right, that was a banger for sure. But when I was growing up, I liked the lyrical stuff. Right. So I always had like a battle rap mentality. Like I'm like, they suck. They suck. Yeah. But now, like, you know, even you said that that picture makes you present. I feel like I've been a little bit, I found peace myself too. And that's something that I learned where I'm like, even if you don't like somebody's music, I'm like, all right, what are they doing right? If they, if they're as bad as I think they are, they must be doing something right. So now I'm like more a student in the game. I'm trying to learn. And that's why he agreed to do the show. <laughs> he said, you know what? I may not like Chingo shit, but let me get on here. <laughs> no, no. I, I really, uh, I heard some of your stuff, but I was like, I want to just go in and, you know, you seem like a cool guy. So, um, oh, I, but yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess I had a, like offers and stuff with with labels and just like little things but it never just came through i guess because i'd always ask a lot of questions what if there was a contract or percentages i was always kind of keen to that and i feel like the more i asked questions the less interested they were it's still true to this day even though i have more leverage in business meetings the more questions i ask about the contract the more they're like uh you know they're like oh man this guy reads this stuff no, we, we don't want to do it bro back in the day uh there was this little sneaker company called yums right out of dallas and it was uh, some older white cats that owned it. And they had Soulja Boy doing an endorsement. And a lot of Texas rappers like had their own version of Yum Sneakers. And the shit was blowing up. They had a cool art team. And uh, we had a meeting. And I looked at the contract. And it's like, wait, there's it's a three-year contract with four options. So then in, in, the, in the meeting, I pull out my red pen. I circle that shit. I'm like, so this is really a 12-year contract. Mm. And they're just <laughs> like, all right, uh, fuck this kid. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. You got to think like that, though. I mean, luckily, maybe maybe we both had like business savviness to us and maybe not naivety. Everybody's like naive. Right. I want to be famous. I want to be rich. But the one thing I'm reading and it said, like, there's these two percent. I'm adding all the percentages. Of them. I'm like, is that 15 percent for me and 85 percent for you guys? Like I knew I was 19 or 20, but I'm like, I'm not taking 15 percent of my own shit. That's crazy. But some people really want the limelight. Right. So they're like, I'll sign that and get there. But I'm thinking to myself. I could probably make more myself if I just wait uh, and it worked out, I think. And then on top of all that, uh, on top of it being shitty percentages and splits, and now you have creative control, intellectual property, the masters, and then you get the funny arithmetic that they do where it's like, all right, check it out, Anomaly. Uh, we had to make uh, a million posters. You're like, I did not see a million posters anywhere. It's like, well, you know, the music video, we had to pay this hair and makeup. We'll do what right, we do. right. And it's right. like, we're still in the red. Right. And I think uh, what's the name of the advance? You know, that's for most artists, anybody out there listening, the advance is money that they give you, but it's really a loan. So if you're only getting 15 percent of your stuff and you took out a hundred thousand dollar advance, that's an one hundred thousand dollar loan that you make a hundred thousand, eighty five thousand goes to them, fifteen thousand goes to you. And then your fifteen thousand goes to them to pay off the advance. So it's advances are never like just free money. It's just they're giving it to you and then they're taking it out the back end. The music business is a big fucked up credit card <laughs> that's what it is so right. so so you moved to uh socal you've been out there and um eventually you made the i guess a shift where you started doing more like commentary online and and how did you make that transition from music to what anomaly is now right uh 2016 i just i was just rapping and freestyling and i was paying attention to bernie versus hillary first and then obviously trump and hillary and i just saw how the media was like rigging it to act like Hillary's the best, you can't disagree. The accusations, they I, they started calling Bernie supporters Russian bots, robots in 2016. And I'm like, I didn't even know anything about Russia. Like I wasn't that savvy to foreign policy. So I was like, I, I've never been to Russia. It's a place I rarely think about. You know, like nobody raps about going to Moscow. You know, it's, it's not like Mexico or, or like Dominican Republic. Like I didn't, I wasn't really keen to it, but they're like, they're Russian bots, they're racist. Uh, my stepfather's Mexican and he he was the first person I knew that really liked Trump because I didn't at, the, at first. I was like, why do you like him? And he explained it to me. I mean, I'm talking like he has like an accent and stuff, Like he's Mexican, Mexican. I'm like, so when they start calling everybody racist and white, I was just like, ah, you know, it never is. Something wasn't adding up. So I started just talking out loud and, and trying to be more honest in the media. I felt like they were just lying about literally everything. 
Yeah, it took me a while to catch on because I was believing that shit. I'm sitting home watching the view, like, man, I'm like, man, Whoopi, Whoopi got a good point. <laughs> hey, Joy, Bayard right, be right. knowing her shit, big dog. Uh, do you got red pill right, hard? Right. Yeah. So, uh, so you want to hop in, Rob? Now, well, <clears throat> I just wanted to ask, like, what originally? What were you going to school for, uh, Anomaly? Uh, I want to say advertising or marketing, but it was under the. It wasn't under communications. I think. Shit, that, that shows how bad I did at school. I dropped out, by the way. But I, I want to say it was like an advertising um, major. But what I hated about school was, besides everything, because I was just trash at it, but I didn't get to what I wanted to learn until like my second or third year. Like I'm taking class about rocks. I got this old guy sitting up there being like, dude, let me tell you about this rock. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> I don't care about rocks right now. I mean, it's cool if, if you're interested in that. But yeah, I don't know. I I. I remember taking 20 classes. I don't really remember even taking many advertising classes. I didn't get to it. Pretty similar to you, huh? Well, my shit was um, business administration with a concentration in marketing because mm. I shied away from any, anything finance, accounting. That shit was too, that, that's too much math for me, bro. I came up in public <laughs> school, bro. Come on, man. Leave no child behind. <laughs> Cut me some slack. Until the contract. Look, man, I'm not a biologist. All right. Don't be asking me what the fuck a woman is. <laughs> I can't answer that question. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's a whole nother debacle, man. Gonna get my blood pressure up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so to move from that, like you were saying, anomaly, to like go into the 2016 election. Prior to 2016, were you starting to like dip your toe into it, or did you just go all in in 2016? I want to say I rapped in 2008, 2009. That's when I first started. I was always rapping about what they would con consider conspiracy theories ah. and stuff. You know, so I always, I always had this angle. I wasn't a Democrat. I wasn't a Republican. I didn't know what liberal or conservative even meant, to be honest. I just felt like bankers ran the show and Freemason. Like, that's how I was thinking in 2008. Uh, I, I liked Ron Paul. I didn't realize he was libertarian or right wing. I didn't know what that meant. I just could identify Ron Paul was more authentic and they were trying to black them out. And then it was 2016 where I started really paying attention like every day. Cause I was more into the hip hop stuff. Like I'd be watching Nardwar, like Snoop Dogg show, everything, you know, interviews. Um, I'm trying to think who else was like Vlad TV, battle raps. All I did was I lived, ate, eat, sleep and breathe like rap. So I didn't even, well, I just like Obama's cool. Like to me, I was like, I think Obama's probably a puppet, but he's kind of cool. He's probably cooler than George Bush. And I, like, I like that he played basketball. Like yeah. I was on that level. I'm like, that motherfucker could speak. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, <laughs> right. I, I don't know what he said, but I feel moved right now that I need a free cell phone. And yeah, healthcare is fucked up. <laughs> <clears throat> he's a smooth character, man. I watched yeah. a video of him about guns and like he had a, he had a way. He was no dummy. He wasn't like, I'm stealing your guns. Like he would finesse his way and be like i'm not talking about all guns you know what i'm saying i'm talking about just like and, and, and you would like you said he's very he's way smoother than the democrats they have today like for sure he he got the little fork tongue and it. shit yeah. 100%. <laughs> hold on we going in deep hey man this motherfucking hey man this pharmaceutical shit i got allergies bro and i think this shit right here is mixing with something <laughs> i wasn't supposed to bring this across the border but uh <clears throat> yeah so so who are some of your um rap influences like who are just some people either either you came up listening to or you still check for now some of your favorite right i want to say the first song because i like poetry early on in my life i like rhyming poetry before i even knew what rap was so i always like to rhyme and then i heard eminem dr dre forgot about dre just how they were fast rapping nowadays everybody want to say it. and i was like dang that's like poetry to the next level and then i fell in love with it so that was the first in uh in high school i want to say like Man, I liked like big tech, big L, excuse me, freestyles. Like, you know, I was listening to him, Jedi Mind Tricks. Uh, those were people that were like really starting to flow and talk about different things. Like Jedi Mind Tricks talked about wars and stuff. So I think that's how I kind of got political too, listening to them talk about shit. And I was like, man, or, or like Immortal Technique, like yeah. the dance with the devil or something. You get high, listen to that song. And I'm just like, I like hey, that guy's <laughs> really rapping. You know, like he, it's like a scary story. You know, I'm like, I'm like nervous. I feel like I'm watching a, a horror movie. Yeah. yeah, that paranoia kicks in. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah. Do you fuck with uh, Papoose at all? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. What about Cannabis? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I saw him battle too, but uh, I had like three, maybe like two or three Cannabis songs on my iPod. On my iPod. Uh, I, I know Redman isn't considered like, like a, he he he's a little bit different than the big L's of the world. But you fuck with Redman, right? Man? He's hard though. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, he's he's actually one of my favorites. Like, it's just something about 
how he paints a picture and like the attitude and the persona and the, like the style and the character. Um, actually, on our Discord, we were having a conversation where one of the members, um, he was like, hey, Ching, oh, he asked everybody, do y'all fuck with Boom Bap? And I was like, well, what do you, what do you mean by Boom Bap? You know, I ain't a biologist. Right. Tell me how you define it. <laughs> And, right. then he, and then he gave a list. Uh, do, you, do you mind pulling it up? Yeah, man? yeah I'll pull it to up to see if any of these names make a reaction or, or if you chime in. But uh, yeah, but yeah, we definitely want to disabuse you of whatever DJ Vlad. Uh, you know, hey, we're on rock with Vlad over here, big dog. I heard, I heard the the streets are mad at Vlad. I, I like, I know I'm I, mad at Vlad. <laughs> okay, did he do something to you too? Hey, man, I can't tell that story on there, bro. Because you know, well, sir- I was talking to Lord Jamar, and he was saying that that like a lot of people didn't like. He explained it on his podcast to me, so I know the the streets be mad at uh at, at Vlad now. I am personally, uh, allegedly, <laughs> you know, certain intelligence agencies may be uh, using AI to scan and, and listen to what the fuck I say. Are you able to pull it up? <laughs> yeah, I found the. He asked the question, and then I can't find. There was a long list after that. Our Discord is so off yeah, the chain. I can't that, find it. It was a huge list though. Yeah, it was super fucking long. I wish I could just pull it up. So, was it like OGs? Because I know I grew up on like '90s rap, but I know the like some of the older heads would be like, "Yo, you gotta hear like Rakim and Eric B." Like it goes, you know. And I'm not, I'm not knocking Rakim. I know he's like one of the goats. It's just I didn't even know about that music until after. Like I had, I had to have older friends put me on to like '80s rap because I didn't, I didn't listen to it in college, and then I started. Some people mean that by boom bap. They go that far back, but I, I always think of like '90s stuff. Yeah, that's why I asked. No, nah, it, it, the list didn't have any '80s stuff like that. It, it was like okay. shit, yeah, it was a shit ton of '90s. But, but yeah, man. Um, we started this show a year ago, and uh, hopefully, a, a lot of our audience who ha- may have not heard of you can go follow you on Twitter. Uh, all the content you're like a multimedia company, pretty much. Like you, you produce a lot of stuff. It's very timely. Um just really good perspective you know you know like these days man we have like russell brand and even joe rogan be get, you know popping some off where he'll just like have a specific guest and they'll make a really good point um right. you know so anybody that's listening you know do yourself self a favor and go check out everything consume it all you know go go peruse it you got youtube where else where else are you distributed uh rumble bit shoot gab facebook instagram dream rare like my hat is uh probably the best the best place like instagram i think a lot of people are using but yeah i I crank out a lot of videos and i try to keep it going i think you know working so hard and being independent and working other jobs for so long once it cracks like you know people are like why are you always putting out so much content why i'm like it's my job now you know i'm happy to be here so i just don't want to uh yeah drop the ball but do you have a patreon yeah, patreon.com slash rare talk. Yeah. Um, have you experienced any um, like being shadow banned or anything like that? Because I've been seeing a lot of red flags. We're, we're on Patreon. Shout out to the patrons, members of the Thea, the Tamale right. Intelligence Agency. Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Um, we've been seeing a lot of red flags of different people. Uh, Bridget, what's her name? Fetacy. Fet- yeah. And just a lot of people are like, well, just got kicked off of uh, Patreon because I was a guest right. on, on uh, Alex, Alex Jones. Jones stuff like that so i get a little nervous and i also get very frustrated with how big tech you know like they'll just hit you with a thing like they might have a, an incentive like hey you can make money off reels if you just make enough reels get enough views and it's like oh you shouldn't have did that said right that. they did that to me yep man how, how how like are you gonna end up having like a timpool.com type of like landing page where you can just have more control that's a good question. I mean, I just started using Patreon too. I've been using it for a while, but I started pumping it again and I saw the same thing. Like I saw like three different people like ban, ban, ban on the same day. Uh, it's frustrating because like if, you know, maybe I'll, I'll post this and, and try to get the people to Patreon to hear it, like tag them or something on Twitter. But it's like, you know, we're real people. Like everybody's a real person. So a lot of these people, this is their money. They have kids, you know, they're trying to feed their family. And the way that they take it away, it's not like, okay, you did something bad. You deserve it. They won't even really tell you what you said half the time. They'll say hate speech. But what does that mean? Like you might hate a joke. I might think it's funny. You might hate it. I might like that movie. You might hate it. The truth might be upsetting to certain people. So like hate, you could hate the truth. And now the truth is hate speech. So Patreon just takes away people's money. I know some of these people got kids, you know, they make like 4K a month. And I'm sure that's like a huge part of their income. And you, you don't even have a conversation with them. There's no phone call. Like the big tech has turned heartless. They make absolutely no sense. And um, I've never experienced it on Patreon, Instagram. I actually just made a video. They took away my monetization, which was ended up being like a couple grand this month. Uh, 
because I did Russia Ukraine reporting and I showed it's like I don't do like I'm not sloppy and inaccurate. I used the Hill, I used Wall Street Journal, I used all verified sources and just didn't even say anything crazy. And they're just like, Yeah, we don't want you to make money, but we're gonna, you know, let this person be sponsored. So there is like a concerted effort to really like, you know, suck the income and revenue out of anybody that doesn't follow completely <laughs> along with their agenda. And I don't know if they pretend to be nice to people, but like, yeah, we're all real people. And and the way they take the money and won't even have conversations with us is super cold. My, my One of my frustrations along with this is that I feel like a lot of the, not, not to say normies and shit like that, but just like even a lot of my music fans or pe some people that may tune into this podcast, they might not see it as censorship. They might not see it as a parallel between like, this is how they do it in other countries. You know what right. I'm saying? And sure, they're just de de uh, incentivizing. Yeah, they're private platforms. And well, you know, they got terms and conditions. And if you don't like it, go make your own YouTube right. or whatever. But it's like, bro, at some point, you have to start seeing that they're inching like little by little. It's just turning into, I don't even know what the word is totalitarian authoritarian i don't know what the fuck it is but right. but it sure as fuck ain't free speech i'll tell you that right it's and i don't understand why a lot of people don't see it because say hip-hop music i think most people think uh whether you're left wing right wing you don't care about politics you shouldn't be able to ban a hip-hop song like then you could say oh it's a drug reference let's ban it it's a street story let's ban it i mean eminem's got some of the craziest lyrics i've ever heard about like doing crazy shit to his own family and that's up there because it's considered artistic in my opinion, that's fine. I think that's great because you don't want to pass that line. They've passed that line. They've banned actual rap songs. Bryson Gray, Patriot J had their uh, song has, with Safe Space. It's it's not even like a top 50 crazy song I've ever heard. It's just like funny and, you know, relevant topics. And they're speaking their mind and also making jokes. I mean, like, you know, hip hop is also about how many rappers have done everything they've ever said. Probably very few. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some are real, but like a lot of people... You push it a little bit. You t sometimes like Lupe Fiasco and like Immortal Tech, they're telling stories in their music, you know? And so where do you, you know, the fact that they've censored a, a song and, and people are just cool with it and they, they don't realize that they're using this like right wing scapegoat as a way to push the censorship. It's crazy that people haven't caught on. Yeah. And I feel like we're one of the last generations. Like if I worry about the future, like our kids, you know, because if you're already indoctrinating them, you can persuade and manipulate the youth into thinking that, well, you know, but that is hate speech, Timmy. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we do need these safe spaces. And, you know, it's not right. fair for Bryson to call violence against groups of people and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, OK, well, what the hell is America anymore? You know what I mean? Like, right. like, how do you feel? I want to get your take on this uh, Supreme Court nominee and the hearing and how she can't define nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I guess... Uh you know, they went with the race and gender card. And I'm not saying that because she's a black woman. I'm saying that because before he even picks someone, he's like, I'm going to find a black woman. So there's somewhat of like a humor a hypocrisy. I don't know if it's the right word, but like irony, maybe um, that she won't define woman, but she is a black woman. She got chosen because of that. You know, like Biden didn't say, I'm going to choose a non-binary, you know, fluid, transgender. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to choose a black woman. And then they're like, what's a woman? And she's like, ah, you know, I mean, that could get you banned from Patreon now. If you have like the wrong joke about that, which is crazy, you know, as a comedian, like Mexicans, white people, black people, nobody's off limits. As long as you're real and funny, everybody's going to love you. As long as you're not a scumbag and you're actually funny. Uh, now you can't joke about gay or transgender like you're above humor. That's the craziest thing in, my, in the world to me. Like you, you could call me the woman of the year because I have long hair. Is that hate speech? <laughs> I mean, no, you know, so that's not even close to hate speech. But if you are, you know, a transgender, now that same joke would be considered hate speech. So, you know, I think it's crazy. And I, I think, uh, you know, the, the left is very, very smart. Like how you used to say you watch The View, uh, you know, they know how to emotionally manipulate people and use different groups and, and talk to you in a way you want to be talked to. Like that is what's bothering me. So I think uh, they're, they're, they know exactly like the best way to you know, get somebody to push our agenda is use every victim card we can so we could just call the other side racist and sexist. Yes, yeah, the intersectionality, oppression Olympics. And then by the same token, uh, how you just say hypothetically, like, I got long hair. They could just call me woman of the year, willy nilly. Yeah. Not only <laughs> that, not only that, there could be a satire page who might name you man of the year. And all of mm -hmm. a sudden, 
they're uh, blocked or suspended or deplatformed or whatever. And pretty soon, right. pretty soon it's going to be debanked and decrypto. Right. De, you're, you're off the central, you know, the individual swift. The same way they took Russia. You know, we got to be careful what the hell we say. <laughs> but um, I feel like that happened to a satirical website recently. Uh, talking about Babylon B. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Like, what type of goofy ass shit? And I do stand up. That's like my main thing. You know what I'm saying? This is like one of our si- our, our other projects. Um, and pretty soon podcasting might be the main project because I don't know what the future of stand up and touring holds. You know, just right. log- logistically, a lot of my opening comics are like, bro, have you seen these flight prices? And it's like, and I sure as fuck don't want to drive. Yeah. Have you seen these gas prices? You know, can I zoom into the comedy club? <laughs> hologram time and there's a portion of my show where i i go off on a tangent and i say you know comedians jobs is to show us how free we, we really are as a society right. we have to define the line of who we are not allowed to make fun of who we not allowed to talk about and to see how free uh fr- freedom how free <laughs> we really are and you know i you know I, i'm trying to I'm trying to finesse that portion of the show so I could, you know, I got to make it funnier and stuff, not just like, oh, that's the speech portion. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I kind of use it to set them up for a a following joke. But uh, it's just so crazy to me, man, like clown ass world that, for example, check this out, bro. Um, I tend to uh, shit on Latino Hollywood, you know, because they bamboozled, bamboozled us with Despacito. You got Eva Longoria, George Lopez. Everybody pulled out their pom poms for, for Gavin Newsom and the Democratic Party. Every single time. I can't wait to see them pull the pom-poms out for midterms. And 2024, they're going to pull out the pom-poms. I would love to see Eva Longoria, who has lots of women support, female support. I want to see her define publicly what a woman is. Because all these women are supporting this Latina woman who I guarantee you can't do that shit on tape. She, she can't be like, oh, I'm going to tell you what a woman is right now. Uh, George Lopez, he probably, hey, George, how many genders are there? I... I challenge you right here right now everybody in the comments wants to see what your take is how many genders are there should we have tampons in the men's uh in the boys locker room in high school the the baseball teams and shit they got that shit in louisiana bro louisiana tampons in the boys restroom (sighs) it's real it's real so yeah man that's one of my beats i know you have puerto rican bro so i don't want to trigger uh I don't want to trigger you. No, I'm, I'm a quarter, so I'm only 25%. <laughs> triggered. Uh, yeah, triggered, yeah. So 75% of me fully agrees, but a uh, quarter of me is furious. No, but yeah, yeah that's how they work in, in all the racial communities. You know, they they get the famous people. And uh, I don't know if it's like paid off, but, uh, you know, it's like you're just in the in crowd. And when you're around people and you're not listening to other sides, you know, I don't, I don't, I think a lot of them think they're doing the right thing. You know, they're just surrounded by that type of big money. And on the uh, debanking thing, I wanted to bring this up because they always say, well, it's a private platform, right? So just go make your own. Someone who actually did that, they're called Gab.com. They did it and they said, you know what? Because a lot of the right wing things, they'll, they'll sacrifice a few free speech things in order to stay on Apple. Gab said, listen, our constitution is going to be the U.S. Constitution. If it's allowed by in America, it's allowed here. You can't be threatening people and stuff. They're not allowing people to commit crimes. But as far as political and social expressions, everything flies as long as it's protected by the First Amendment. They got debanked. They got de PayPal. They got deservered. Their servers pulled out. They had to rebuild the entire thing from scratch. They're doing fine now because the leader is a savage and he was like, I'm really about this life because they tried to crush him, smear him, say that he, you know, he's a Nazi or whatever, like all sorts of crazy stuff. And he's like, dude, I'm telling you how I believe I'm, I'm just a free speech person and I don't have to agree with everything on the platform. A lot of people hate me on my platform. He's like, but this is how I'm rocking. So that's how savage they are. It's the same thing with this. It's like, oh, you can really speak your mind. It's like, no, you can't. You know, you guys are not only going to not provide us Hollywood opportunities if we speak this way. You're actively and I'm not saying they're all in on it, but big tech, Instagram, they're going to try to make it nearly impossible for us to make money and just steal like the you know if you're a celebrity they're handing out millions of dollars if you're us you're you're like swimming against the current where it's like you know we're i'm still doing fine god is great i don't care but uh yeah it's like they're taking money from me there is no there is no handouts how are you trying to hedge your 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 bets right now anomaly with like the censorship and the shadow ban and the deplatforming like what are you trying to do to actively make sure your audience gets what you're putting out I have an f- email list I've been putting out for years. So I got uh, over 160,000 or so on an email list. I got Telegram. I have Gab, BitChute, Rumble, their alternative. I have this uh, hat website. It's called a dreamrare.com or godblesshats.com. I own that 100%. 
Um, a Patreon podcast I started because it seems like Apple and Spotify don't censor as much. So I'm trying to do all that. But even like Chango said, I've been having the same conversation in my head and it sucks because I like Patreon. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, dang, if they took that overnight, I might have to build my own website. I wasn't thinking about that, but I am now. Mm. Man, to shift gears a little bit, because we've talked about like Hollywood and, and politics and stuff like that. The intersection of all this shit is Skeet Davidson, a political operative sent <laughs> to smear Kanye and ruin his mental health. That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, I'm going to start with this, bro. It's the craziest video I think I might have seen all week. And I slept on it at first. And then I kept thinking about it after I watched it. It's it's a uh, Kim Kardashian on Ellen DeGeneres talking about how she's branding him like with metal um, because she wants the, or he wants the tattoo to not be removable. Cause he's got, he's got some ugly tattoos. I seen it with the shirt off in New York post. Like he looks like a, they were saying he looks like a desk at school. Like just random scribbles <laughs> and stuff. It don't even, it, it don't even look slick like a lot of people's, but um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's like, you're getting the Kardashian branded on you. Like, I feel like, it might be a dominatrix situation there, you know what I'm saying? Where she's just like, you know, Pete, you're my little slave boy. Like, you're going to get branded. Like, because that's next level dominatrix stuff. It's not just like bedroom. It's like, you're going to be permanently tattooed with my name and you're going to like it. So, man, Kanye might have dodged a bullet there. I don't know what's going I don't know what's going on. But, yeah, I think Ski is just an open vehicle, you know, for Satan. And I, I pray for him because I feel like he's just all over the wow. place. And, uh, you know, I think I don't even know if anyone's paying him off, but I think Satan is just, you know, coming in his empty Ooh. holes and he's got to He's got to patch it up and start getting too jacked for the gulag. Bro, that that's the take right there. <laughs> that is a take because it's spiritual warfare. We, you know, we don't it's talk an about godly force. You're right. We don't talk about that enough, but it is like Triple will say, like it's a, it's good versus evil. It's not, you know, it's nothing other than just good versus evil. See, because I, I, I didn't, I didn't look at it as like Skeet is a vessel for the devil. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really see it like he's just waiting for something to become his religion or whatever, or to, you know, well, I don't know. And then the dominatrix thing, I didn't really think about that angle either. I was just literally thinking like he's one of those emotionally like like gets overly like super mandy lone coochie whoop yeah yeah yeah. like you that coochie whoop bro you're gonna get the shit branded <laughs> it's super coochie whoop. it's it's like next level because you can't remove it i mean it's even because usually if you see like you date someone for a month they got a tattoo you're like bro you're soft like it's not even your wife you just met her it's kim kardashian it's branded so you can't even take it off ever like it's in your skin and that kind of makes me feel like he's like a He's like a little satanic sock puppet or something where they're just like, here you go, Pete. It's Wednesday. And like, ah! like, I'm like, bro, are you in control of your life at all? I and almost then, feel bad for the guy. I'm like, dude, then he got the, working he, you, he got the Hillary tattoo. too. I bro, heard about that. I didn't even know that. Goofy. Right. I thought it was like a parody at first because I'm like, really? But I think he really, ha yeah, he really has a Hillary tattoo that he got during the other election. That's yeah, like dude, he's just. What were you saying, Chingo, about like Ellen and Hillary and him? Oh yeah, Kanye. You know he'd be deleting his Instagram posts, right? But he's made some allegations where he's like, "Look, this shit is deeper than what it looks like." He's like, "It's no coincidence that um, he said, oh, Hillary's ex boyfriend Skeet." You know he's probably talking shit right there, but he's basically saying like, "This y'all are pawns." Like Ellen controls a big part of the uh, uh, industry. Uh, what's the name? Uh, Hillary and the Dems own the media and, and mainstream Hollywood and all that. And um, I don't know. Some of it kind of makes sense because the minute Kanye put on a red hat and went over there to chop it up with Big Don, Teflon Donnie, it was like, yo, I could Air Force One finna be psh, Balmain, Balenciaga and this bitch. And then ever since that, they started coming with all the, oh, he's clearly off his meds. Mental health. Uh, we have a mental health expert here. So what is a delusional bipolar episode? You know what I mean? And it's like, y'all are slandering this man, bro. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he makes a lot of sense in his rants. Like, I like him because it's just stream of consciousness. You know what I'm saying? He's shot. You could tell he's just super smart shouting out like 10 streams at once where like some people, when you're hating, you, you can't really pick it up. And in some ways, he brings some of the stuff on himself where he's just like a wild guy. You know, I'm going to take the mic and say Beyonce had the best video, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> but that's what makes him iconic. It's just like he really 
just does what he wants. But uh, politically and socially, he's spot on. He's talking about buying land, you know, black people not playing the victim and unlocking their brain. And this is the part that I think Kanye gets. I don't know if he explains it like this, but that's how I see it, where it's not to say you can't look at the past and understand where you came from, et cetera. But Kanye is, I think, one of the richest, if not the richest black person in the world, maybe ever. Like he's that wealthy you don't get that wealthy by believing you're lesser than you are mm-hmm. kanye's believed he was a shit for 20 years you have to you have to be confident so that what the white liberals are doing to black people is trying to say you ha- should think this way when you're young and that's that critical race theory i know a lot of people think oh white people just can't hear about black history it's like no they're brainwashing black and white kids to be like low energy low manifestation you want to tell your kid yeah there's trouble in the world but you are great. You, you know, your skin color is not going to hold you back. If you tell someone, yo, Chingo, you're never going to make it. You And you start believing that because of your ethnicity, then then the hustle disappears. So it's like they're, you know, Kanye's trying to tell black people to manifest greatness. Don't even allow that in your mind, you know, and that's that's how he's been able to create like he's a thinker and a doer. Like you got to believe in yourself to do that. And no one's going to hold him back. And if they try, like you just keep going on so that's that's the real trick of the you know the liberal race indoctrination and for sure they control hollywood and for sure they control the industry and and all of this stuff and it's like you know you got to be real smooth or real quiet if you're gonna stay in that you know party zone and not you know and still make money you either got to be smooth with it and, and conservative or just straight up don't say a word oh yeah i like when he did that black future month <clears throat> Right, oh, right. That That's good. exactly. And it just sucks that so many people uh, have been have been assigned opinions and they're already primed to think that all the stuff Kanye's saying is crazy right wing, you know, whatever. Like, you know, Rob's been called the brown face of white supremacy many, many times. hundred <laughs> percent. Dude, speaking about all this stuff, uh, what was your big red pill moment? Because you were talking about some of this stuff before, you know, Donald Trump was even in the picture at all. But what was the big red pill moment for you? When I was in 2007, 2008, I'd heard Alex Jones, people like Joe Rogan, actually. And I started thinking deeper, getting into conspiracies. So I always felt like something was going on where there was something, even if it was just the four or five, six corporations that control all media. I was keen to that pretty young. So I kind of knew something was up, but I didn't understand left wing, right wing, none of that. With the Trump, the first time that I realized Trump wasn't that bad is when I actually heard a full speech, right? So I'm hearing all everybody talking, thinking he's crazy. And then I actually just listened to a full speech and I'm like, dang, he's actually saying some like really deep stuff, you know, about like world elites that nobody's talking about. So I started kind of learning that. And I think once I started realizing he he wasn't that bad, I've always been an honest person. I just started making videos. I'm like, I didn't even vote for him, but he's not that bad. And like the way people responded just got crazy. Like something happened because like the world was not like this during Obama. I'm sorry. At least I just wasn't living in that world. I know there's right wingers who didn't like Obama, but they didn't control culture. Nobody like talked about it all the time. The world was normal. People lost their minds over Trump to the point where if the dude drank water, they're calling him Hitler because Hitler drank water. And I'm like, yo, you guys are great. Like you don't have to like them, but this whole this whole new level that people took it, it started weirding me out. And then the more I spoke out, the more I learned. And it's been just a constant evolution, not even as like uh, social issues and stuff. But as a person, I started so some of these liberal things you think when you're younger, as you grow older, you're like, oh, no, discipline is important. You know, like self accountability is important. You don't want to be not fun, but you do want to have a certain level of control over your life. And I think it's a combination of getting older and the left. I feel like at Chingo, like when we grew up, they were not that crazy at all. I mean, we made jokes. We said the word gay. Like it, there was no like speech, please. I mean, and not at all anywhere, in my opinion. And then now the kids are hella soft and I feel bad for them. But they're being totally like the left went 20,000 steps to the left. It's not the same liberal thing that I grew up with. Yeah, it started with PC culture. That was where it was inching its way you know they started fucking with comedians and stuff so yo man the gas price in california we have um i'm gonna be touring in cali if if you're in the area man we'd love to have you on the guest list come have a laugh bring some guests Um, where where in cali are you going i'm doing everything from irvine brea ontario oxnard uh possibly burbank possibly okay i'm in orange county that's that's a conservative area so So, that's where i'm at so okay maybe like ontario or one of those brea yeah i'll hit you up for sure um 
so a lot of our members at a patreon members on a discord a lot of my audience is, is uh is real big in california from the bay to the south how are people like the normies or just liberal kids that have been indoctrinated man what's what's the vibe out there the zeitgeist when it comes to like well you know you know the gas well it's not their fault you know they're doing their best we're gonna get a stimulus in california <laughs> right it's tough for me to see because, like, I, you know, I live in SoCal. I'm in a conservative, more like red area. It's not like conservative. It's just like clean <laughs> and nice. Yeah. You know, it's not like yeah. LA, but uh, yeah, like I go to the beach and I just kind of like vibe out and I don't, I don't really like associate with the culture that much. You know, I, I'm in my own zone. But the one time I talked to somebody that seemed more left leaning, I went out for St. Patrick's Day. I was just talking to this chick and she showed me she was super liberal or whatever. And I don't know. Her, her thing was like, she's like, I hate that Republicans are saying that Joe Biden's to blame for the gas. Like, and I was like, I just didn't feel like arguing. So I was like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't know what the vibe is really with certain people. Like, I think they've been now conditioned to be like, OK, you know, it's all Putin's fault. And I'm not saying he's not partially responsible, but the inflation of all the covid money printing California gas has always been a little bit higher than the rest of the country. And it still is like if it, you guys are four, we're six. If you're two, we're five. Um, I guess it's that easy to control certain people. They just say things and people don't critically think about it. But uh, yeah, I don't, you know, as far as like so many other people, I kind of just block it out. As At they, this point, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm in my own zone. As they pump, they're like, well, freedom isn't free. <laughs> yeah, right, I'd right, pay right. $15 I'll, if or, I have hey, to. Take that, Putin. Take that. <laughs> yeah, I, I made it like a little parody thing. I was like, we need to get poor for Putin. You know, it's like a little thing where I'm like, let's, the poorer you are, the better. You know, we got to get poorer and poorer for, to, to fight Putin. That's the only way. It's like, how is, how is my poverty going to fight Vladimir Putin? That, I don't that, know if that's how it works. Yeah, right. That's the part that frustrates me. It's like, nothing is Biden's fault. Not the border, not Afghanistan. Afghanistan, like he, they didn't contribute to any of this. Inflation's not his fault, you know. None of this shit's his fault, and it's like, wow, y'all literally just hop on TV and just straight gaslight people. And Mexican Americans, right. bro, they're gonna be the last one. We're gonna be the last ones to get it. You know, I like to roast my own people. I like to, I like to bully them into submission. You know what I'm saying? Like, we should do a, we should do a, a, a contest or something where we like find a like a little hater lefty comic yeah. comment in the uh, in the in the comment section or something and just be like hey dude we'll cash app you 50 bucks all you got to do is just sit through a, a whole trump speech or whatever right mm. like like that's that's it you don't have to agree you we don't have to persuade you but at least you can now argue with people and say i've literally watched entire speeches and just pay them dude you got to make bully great bullying great again yeah, I want to make a joke about that too. Because our bring our, back bullying for real. Our Discord literally, it's like the family barbecue where all the theos and theas and cousins and everybody are just picking on everybody. But everyone's got tough skin and they just come back with more, and it's fun. The Discord seems more fun than a lot of real life social circles. Like, how has this affected your social circle anomaly? Um, I guess it just kind of weeded it out naturally because I've always kind of been on my own. I think rapping, but. A lot of my friends back home were way more left wing than I realized because we never talked about politics. I, I mean, I wasn't considered anything. We just hung out. Uh, definitely certain people like felt a certain way, but I don't really trip over it because I feel like it's brought hundreds of better people and just like interesting like musicians, athletes that I've always grown up liking that reached out to me because of my message. So it's it's brought you know, a new group of people where it's like I have old friends that I've known since fifth grade that I'm still tight with. And, you know, I don't need a thousand friends. Uh, I wanted to say with the like Hispanic brainwashing that they're doing, like for people who do speak English, which is tens of millions of Hispanics in America, you know, they use the race card to kind of manipulate with a lot of people for people who don't, because there's also a, a large portion of people in the Hispanic world and here that don't speak English. You know, they have like Telemundo and and it's totally left wing. And they do this thing where instead of showing like a full Trump clip, they'll always just show like really small clips, like, you know, change the coloring of it, make it look like a movie. And uh, th there's got to be some sort of combat in that. And I'm sure you're helping do that. But, you know, people need to uh, to get crafty with how they're going to counter the narrative. This has nothing to do with politics. But Mr. Beast was, uh, you know, he said that he puts all his things in like every language, you know, which I thought was brilliant. I've always thought about translating mine to Spanish. I just never got it done. But it's like that's one way to do it where it's, you know, they, they're thinking on every level of how to socially engineer. And I think a lot of honest people don't have the budget or 
you know, maybe just don't don't get it out there. That's really smart. We should uh shit. I don't know who's gonna do it. Maybe my wife. Her Spanish is way better than than mine. Uh I won't speak for Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Your Spanish is better than mine. But um <laughs> but yeah, that's a really that's actually a very genius idea, like to take one of our clips and just voice over it. Cause like all the YouTube stuff that my uh, my daughter watches, uh she's three. So she'd be watching these Russian kids making millions of dollars doing stupid skits, but it's like mm. in Portuguese and, you know, you know, all these different right, languages. Right. It's good marketing. But I think they do that with with politics for sure. Like they're pumping this message over and over and over. It's not true, but people just kind of fall for it. And now we were talking about you first hearing that uh, like a, a full Trump speech you know, around 2016 and then having that big aha kind of red pill moment. How did that intensify going into 2020 from 2016? I made the biggest video I maybe ever did. I, I made a video. I said, listen, I voted Green Party. I've never voted Republican. Here's why Donald Trump's not that bad. And I gave like seven reasons of things that he was doing. Some things were liberal. Some things were common sense. And it got like 20 million views because I think I wasn't coming from this like build a wall, build a wall. So it was like palatable for left wingers to watch me. And I think that's still the case. And it just blew up. And you know, from there, I just was like, I started, you know, reporting on certain things and I like, they were lying from the very jump. Like I said, this whole now this whole Russian narrative, it's not new to me. Yeah, we're, there's a war going on, but they called me Russian in 2016. They've been setting <laughs> this narrative up. That's how crafty they are. I, I'm not a 1% Russian, but it's like, if you disagree with Hillary, you're a Russian. You know, it's like you're a racist, you're a sexist, you're an anti-Semite, you're a xenophobe, you're a conspiracy theorist, you're an anti-vaxxer, you're a transphobe, you're an anti-gay, you're a Russian. These are their ways to basically say, I'm a good person. You're a horrible person. This conversation's over. I don't even have to communicate with you because I'm such a better person than you. And the the situation is these people are always like the worst people. You know, that's it's such a scummy, fake way to just, you know, especially in comedy. I mean, you do comedy. So it's like if so, that wouldn't work. You, you know, you, you, you're not allowed to shut other people up. You just got to be funny. And if you can't be funny, you know, the, the audience tells all and, and, and like the energy tells all. You can't really fake the funk in that world, which is why it's so great. It's like MMA. A lot of these people are more right leaning now because there's nothing fake about fighting. You know, saying you're in the ring, you brawl and, you know, they got all ethnicities in MMA. It seems like most of them lean right It's because it's just real life, real world stuff. But, uh, yeah, I just kept kind of cranking with it and having fun with it. I guess I always had a passion to speak out. So I just, I became passionate about the craft of like edit making videos and you know, it's, it's been cool with me though. I mean, there's been rude people, et cetera, but it is what it is, man. I've, I've never really cared what other people thought. And I know I'm on the right side of history and uh, you know, I try to have fun with, with, with it. How often do you get messages like, yo, anomaly, you red pilled me. A lot, not recently, I guess. Cause uh, I don't check as many as I used to, but I, I would say in 2018, I, I, people would be like, yo, my parents work for, I'm not going to say, but like this big left wing late night show. They're like, they used to watch CNN. Now they watch Fox News. And I'm like, you got to watch with Fox News too. I'm not telling people to watch just straight Fox yeah, News, yeah. but they were like, you you know, they're more conservative than they used to be. So I've heard it a lot. And recently, one of my favorite things I've heard, because through the pandemic, I've been talking about exercise and fitness. I've heard a lot of people be like, yo, I lost 50 pounds listening to you. I used to be on like four pills because that's what the doctor said would work. Now I'm on none and I'm fully healed. Like I've been hearing that a lot, which has been super it's cool. Well, living in SoCal, man, like anytime you got that good weather, it's like you're getting more vitamin D. Your mood is better. That sunlight's good for you. Your testosterone levels go up. Look, we just did Florida. So you can ask the, the comics that rode with me, Juan Perez, Israel Garcia. I was like, bro, I'm, I was eating buku steaks. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting my rest. I took my kettlebell with me, bro. Oh, yeah. hell. I came. Hey, boy. Look here. I came home with a full tank. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So yeah, man. SoCal. Y'all got it. Y'all got it going on with uh, that weather. Go ahead, Anomaly. Yeah. I was just going to say it's the weather's great. There's a lot of areas. It's not all like LA, San Diego and like San Francisco. Um, the politics are on a state level pretty crappy, but the weather's nice. I live close to the beach now. That was always my dream. So I'll wake up some mornings, run on the beach. I body surf and stuff. Like I love nature. I love the ocean. And I always say, you know, the ocean is God's pool, swimming pool. You know, it's just, it's moving. You got the sand feels good. Like it's, it's a vibe. That's why, like you said, I got that yeah. there to remind me. Hell yeah. Did you ever try to uh, dip your toe into entertainment other than music anomaly? And, and what did you, what kind of resistance were you met with if you did? 
I've always just done my own thing. So even now, I feel like I could do a lot of things. Like I've had uh, even, you know, news stations reach out and be like, we might work on a deal. It always falls through, though. Like nobody's serious. So I keep, you know, trucking forward. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do comedy sometimes and, and just do jokes on my channel. Um, I, I'm not really an actor, but I think I could act in a movie if I had a funny role or something that would I, I fit. But uh, I would do it. I guess it's just like, the bigger I've gotten recently, it's it's actually wild. I have over a billion views and I have less offers than I did when nobody knew who I was. You know, I had more when I only had a million or two million views because I was moldable then. And they were like, yo, let's try to make this guy. Now I see how the industry works. Like I'm, you know, I, I have more engagement than like 99.9% .9 of rappers. I'm getting like thousands of comments on my Instagram. They got like four and it don't really matter to me. I'm not, it, it, Instagram doesn't really matter, especially if you're making streams and, and doing shows like shows are awesome. It's just like, they don't, you know, advertising wise, I know the value of what's going on and nobody wants to really touch it with a 10 foot pole. So, um, you know, every offer that I've kind of done in entertainment has been just like myself kind of like doing it on my YouTube channel or, you know, it's like, sadly, that's the only place that, uh, you know, is interested. Well, if you enjoy the beach today, man, think of us because all we have is Galveston. <laughs> no offense to the Gulf of Mexico, but uh, yeah, man, you fuck around, cut your foot. Or catch a rash, stick your foot in that water. That happened to me like a year ago. What'd you get, a rash? I got a little something on my foot, man. I just got like a tiny little scrape on the beach, and next thing you know, it's, it's just infected. It's infected. Yeah, Damn. man. Yeah. I know they have cruises out of there, because I always see that as a big cruise hub. Uh, I can't really go anymore because of the testing and vaccine policy. I think I'm like, you got to be vaccinated to go on Royal Caribbean or something. I was like, dang. Oh, man, it's a different world. Great reset. I hope everybody enjoying their great reset right now. Shout the out to World Order. Shout out to Klaus Schwab and his bitch. <laughs> he actually said that out loud. What do you make of that? And I think like two, three days ago, Biden actually said, like, there's a new world order and we need to we need to lead it. Yeah, well, I'm going to show this real quick. It's a, it's a book. I don't know if it's backwards, but it's called COVID-19, The Great Reset. Like, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's a literal book he wrote. And he he doesn't agree with, like, free market capitalism. But um. Yeah, with the New World Order, the Biden thing, they've been saying that for decades. I think George Bush said it years ago. I mean, they, they're like, we're establishing a New World Order. And then you're like, they're doing a New World Order. And they're like, fact check, that's a conspiracy theory of a secret. <clears throat> I'm not saying it's secret, it's out in the open. And they're saying, they're saying the conspiracy is a, you know, this is like Wikipedia fact check, you know, YouTube saying it's a conspiracy people have. They think that there's like a secret totalitarian New World Order. And I'm reading Klaus Schwab's book. I'm listening to Joe Biden. I, I don't think Joe Biden wants to be totalitarian. I see what he's doing. They don't they want to ban Joe Rogan. You have his press secretary talking about a foreign country, Sweden, who I believe owns Spotify to ban an American citizen. Like, so I don't I mean, I think they're being open and honest. They are trying to do like a global liberal communist sort of thing where there's like a top down you know, and it has, they don't believe in the First Amendment. They don't believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear that they're doing that, but they still try to act as if it's this like crazy theory that like lunatics have. Yeah, where, where could we find that book? Oh, uh, it's on Amazon. It's just like, yeah, like 15, 20 bucks or something on Amazon. It's interesting too. I'm like, I'm gonna read a clip for you real quick because I, I highlighted it. This is from Klaus Schwab. It sounds to me like he doesn't agree with America and he believes in big government. He said, COVID-19 is likely to sound the death knell of neoliberalism, a corpus of ideas and policies that can be loosely defined as favoring competition over solidarity, creative destruction over government intervention, and economic growth over social welfare. So he says COVID's going to end this. And he's saying, you know, what we have now is creative destruction over government intervention. So he sees creativity as destructive and he believes government interventions better than that. Where to me, I don't, I don't know what creative destruction means. Cause I think creativity is great. Free markets. Great. Like this, you know, c comedy would be very boring. If you had a dictator come in and say, you're not allowed to joke about Asians. You're not allowed to joke about white people. And it's not funny anymore. So, you know, he is very open with what he thinks and he does not believe in freedom of speech. He believes in government control. Wow. And it's all up in your grill. <clears throat> and it's frustrating when, you know, you try to explain the shit to the normies and they're like, dude, you're a fucking pothead conspiracy theorist <laughs> that does parodies, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, Anomaly, uh, a.k.a. Dream Rare, uh, we're going to put all your links in the description. We appreciate your time, man. Thanks for checking in. And when I'm in yes, SoCal, sir. when I'm in SoCal, man, we got to, uh, you know what I'm saying, do something, man. 
Yeah, okay. I'll have my guy email you that has because he's been setting it up. Uh, yeah, I would love to check out your your special. When when are you coming to Cali again? Um, I have a uh, shit. We could text you all the dates because it's okay. kind of sporadic. We're doing everything. Brea is in September. Uh, Ontario's July. Irvine's July. Um, okay. Yeah, stuff like that. But for Got sure, you. cool. For sure, brother. We appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. Anomaly. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. For sure. Thanks, brother. Have a good one.